Lynch under center. He's going to run it. He's going to run it into the end zone. Lynch throwing deep left side. Wide open. Tiger touchdown. Paxton Lynch is a big time talent. You don't find guys that are as big and as athletic with the howitzer of an arm that he has that often. Here's Lynch under center. He can sneak it himself. The C parted and the Tigers score again. We have a very special guest with us now, Memphis quarterback Paxton Lynch. He tied an FBS record with over seven TDs you balled against mm -hmm. SMU. Paxton, thank you so much for being here with thank us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Now, before we get into it, Stephen A., you always say that you're the most GQ on the set. Paxton just took over. Really? Yeah. Really? He did. You didn't see well, the full I'm, I'm, get up. He's entitled to believe that. Oh. I mean, I, I, I definitely think it's important. Uh, that a young lad such as himself has <laughs> a lot of confidence. You look great. You're an athlete. You're about to get picked up in the NFL draft. You'll probably be a big-time quarterback. I wish you nothing but the best, but when it comes to the GQ, my brother, come well, on now. I hope someday you now. can maybe pass the torch down to me. Oh, <laughs> maybe someday. Good answer. Yeah. Good answer. Maybe someday. Yeah. Respect your elders. Respect <laughs> your elders. <laughs> Paxton, make a case why a team should draft you. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean... There's a lot of good players, obviously, in this draft, quarterback-wise, with Carson and Jared. I mean, they've done some very impressive stuff where they are. Um, and I know uh, Carson didn't really get looked at that much because he went to a small school. But what he's getting, you know, the recognition he's getting, he deserves, in my opinion. Um, and But, you know, I think we're obviously all good players, and we all have our own unique style of play uh, I think that I have you know I'm very athletic I'm very big uh, but then I can also stand in the pocket and throw the ball I have good arm strength in my opinion so um, you know I think we all bring our own unique attributes to the table and you know it's kind of whatever what team whatever a team wants that's what they're gonna get mm. Stephen A. Paxton what happened uh, you lost three straight Temple, um, I forgot the other two, but and then you lost in the SC, you know, the, the uh, bowl game against Auburn. Right. Uh, lost four or five, lost three straight. What happened during that period, and how much of an impact do you believe it's had on your stock approaching the NFL draft? Uh, honestly, I think that it had, it's had a very big impact on my, my draft stock, especially the last game against Auburn. But um, I know whenever we lost, we lost to Navy, Houston, and Temple just kind of bam, 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 uh, and we were really high, you know. We were like 8-0 or something like that, and after we lost yep. the Navy, we were like, you know, we could, we could still do something special here uh, at Memphis. You know, that was a program that never really won games. So, uh, you know, we still were going out to win those games, and uh, we lost to uh, Houston, and that one really hurt because we were up by 20 points like three po at three times in that game. Uh, we lost that game, and then that one kind of just rolled over into Temple, and, uh, you know, Temple pretty much got after us pretty well, and then we had that game against SMU where we just, you know, put it on them, and then uh, when we played Auburn, it was a little tougher uh, being that Coach Fuente left and went to Virginia Tech, so uh, I know a lot of that coaching staff didn't want to leave uh, before the bowl game, but they kind of had no choice, so, uh, and I'm not holding anything against any of those guys because they deserve that because um, we came in together and now we're all getting our own opportunity. So I'm proud of those guys, uh, you know, getting the opportunity. So uh, it was rough losing your head coach and, you know, one of your one of your play callers uh, and someone, you know, that helps you prepare and all that. And uh, as smart as he was and how much he helped me, uh, it was pretty rough, uh, you know, playing that game without him. And, you know, when you only throw for 100 yards or something like that in your last game, you know, people are going to say some stuff about it now. Like if I had played Auburn midseason and then Ole Miss the last – last game and had the same result, it, it would be talked about different, obviously. <laughs> gotcha. So your dad's 6'5". You grew up in a small town just north of Orlando, mm -hmm. yet you did not play basketball at all at, as you grew towards 6'7". Why was that? Uh, I mean, my parents tried to get me to play when I was a kid, like in the YMCA league, uh, and I got like film of it. Me and my brother like just w walking and you're just giving the ball to each other like over kids heads and stuff and i don't know it was just really like never fun to me i just never really loved really? it yeah like my, my my dad obviously mom loved playing it but uh i just was kind of baseball football all the time like saturday mornings i'd pop warner game and then saturday afternoon i'd go play baseball so, really yeah uh, okay. that's how i kind of grew up wow but but you consider yourself very athletic for your position. Yeah, right? definitely. So I'm, I assume you could have been a pretty good basketball player. Yeah, I guess we'll never know. I know my high school coach, or my high school basketball coach, was the athletic director, so uh, he was always trying to get me to play. But uh, me and my brother were just, you know, never into it. Interesting. Looks like things uh, turned out all right with football. Yeah. 
I got one more question I want to ask you, Paxton, because one of the things, we don't know this, and I think it's fair to make sure we present this question to you. One of the things, whether it's Todd McShay or Mel Kuyper projecting that you'll go 37th uh, to the 49ers, uh, obviously when we hear about Carson Wentz, we hear about Jared Goff, they'll possibly go one and two. You're not in that equation. One of the reasons they, you, they, 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 they use that excuse is because from what we're hearing based on the reports, when you were interviewed, the interview didn't go so great. Can you talk to me about what the interview process has been like for you and how do you feel about it yeah. approaching the NFL draft? Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, um, we at the Combine, you go through a bunch of interviews. Uh, I know I had like 10 or 12. Um, I had two the first night and like 10 the second night. And uh, the feedback I had got from all the coaches was that I did well. So whenever I heard, you know, that on Twitter or whatever it was on, I was a little confused uh, by it because the feedback I got from all the coaches was that I did well. And I didn't feel like I struggled in any of those. Um, but, you know, whatever was said was said. Uh, I, I've heard, you know, stuff that teams, the teams that like you will say the worst stuff about you, hoping that they can pick you like later. And I don't know how true that is, obviously, because I've never been through this. But, um, you know, I've heard stuff like that. But, uh, I mean, I've had 10 or 11, you know, these 30 visits where you go and visit the team. So uh, I didn't do too bad in the combine interviews, obviously, if they wanted to bring me in again to talk to me. Um, so I, I didn't think I did that bad, but I had never been uh, in something like that before where you go into a room and it's coaches, GMs and stuff like that. And you got to, you know, impress those guys. Um, so that was the first time for me. Um, but I thought I, I thought I handled it well and I was prepared. Intense for sure. I'm sure you held your own. Paxton, yeah. we appreciate you. Enjoy next week with your friends and family. Such a special time. And we look forward to watching you at the next level. All Thank the you. best. You Thank you. First Take is presented by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. And in part by the new Money Monopoly game at McDonald's. Play to win. Skip, do you give Dallas or Houston any shot tonight now that they're back at home in their respective games? If Steph does not play, I give Houston the better shot, Stephen A., to rise up and just pride alone to win one game at home against Golden State. I believe Golden State will sweep this series, but if the Rockets are to win one game, it will be tonight. Got it. Yep. It looks like uh, McGregor might be back in oh, UFC really? 200. I'm oh, looking here at ESPN.com, by the way. Well, no, he's right. unretired. No? Dana and them are concentrating on John Jones as far as they're concerned. Hey, it's not, it's, that's not a foregone conclusion that McGregor's going to fight this fight. All right, we'll see. Gentlemen, we'll keep you posted. Thank you, guys. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night. How are you? No! How about a big no? You okay if I go now? Washed up. Again and again and again. Find me! This ain't over, obviously. Right there, you had better be cooperative. We ain't having this. I, I get all of that. Some of you folks out there are just nasty. Give the man a break. Yo, boy. Way to go, Jerry. Way to go.